Is it true that he donated to your campaign? It is. It is. Um, I charged a guy with a felony. Is it true that the defendant served a mission with your brother? <laughs> he did. My brother and the defendant don't have a personal relationship. This is very concerning to me. I was concerned about it being a conflict of interest. He donated $49.99 to my campaign. Um, if you can see some preferential treatment there, um, I, I, I'd like you to point it out. He's accused of dismissing criminal charges against his friend and campaign donor. Now, tonight, multiple attorneys say the way he handled the case should be concerning. I'm just saying that he is a huge supporter of you and fan. This is very concerning to me. More than a month before Utah County Attorney David Levitt had to face questions from the media. Is it true that the defendant served a mission with your brother? <laughs> he did. He was answering those same questions from the alleged victim who wanted to know why her stalking suspect, Mark Stewart Allen, was so cozy with the prosecutor who would eventually drop charges. I'm really obsessing about this. I know because I saw it three times a week. Every, or three times a day sometimes yeah. when, when I was running for attorney general. Levitt told her the suspect donated $49.99 to his campaign for Utah attorney general, but insisted that was not a problem. He should not have personally involved himself in the case. There was nothing to gain and everything to lose. Linda F. Smith is an attorney not affiliated with this case and serves as a member of the Ethics Advisory Opinion Committee. She says Levitt should have never taken the case away from the prosecutor who was originally assigned. The defendant prepared a fairly large binder of information, gave it to my brother, his former missionary companion, my brother forwarded it on to me. The defendant's strategy clearly was to get Levitt directly involved. That's the most suspicious thing, the, the degree to which people were coming up to him and said, hey, David, dismiss this case, handle it um, this way. Levitt says the suspect reaching out did play a role in him taking on the case personally. It certainly was one of the reasons. He says another reason is the original prosecutor refused to drop charges against the suspect. I said, you know, Lance, if, if, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, I'll take the case. I'll do it because I care about the victim. Well, and you're his boss. Well, well, it's my case. It's not his case. It's my case. He says dropping charges was the smartest decision because the trial was being delayed by the COVID-19 pandemic and he thought it would get the suspect to stop harassing the victim. My job is to fashion some sort of protection for this woman. But he says when that did not work, he refiled the charges and that he still does not view any of his ties to the suspect as a conflict of interest. Can they bully their way into a prosecutor giving the case to somebody else? Well, maybe they can somewhere else, but not with this prosecutor, they can't. Do you think it's bullying if it's coming from a victim? I don't think this is come. I mean, I think the victim, frankly, I feel sorry for the victim, uh, my, and my heart goes out to her. The better uh, decision is to not be involved in the case. Dale Bowles is a nonviolent guy who's just trying to get to work. Did you wall yourself off from the case? Um, I don't know. Do you think you should have? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Whoa, but really? He really said that? He really did that? Like, really? In front of people? The Fox 13 News investigative team has spoken with at least six past and present members of the Utah County Attorney's Office who are deeply concerned, quote unquote, by what they describe as unethical behavior by their boss. Now, employees say Levitt also asked them to go easy on a handyman who did work at the county attorney's home. I ran on a platform to change the culture of the Utah County Attorney's Office. Have I done anything wrong? Not at all. Prosecutors say they knew when David Levitt was elected Utah County Attorney, it would fundamentally change the way some cases are handled. It's, it's not my case, it's his case, it belongs to him. But prosecutors like Lance Bastian, who have since left the office, say what they did not like was when Levitt would intervene on cases where he had a personal relationship. Starting in 2018 with the traffic case of a handyman who worked at Levitt's home, a man who has been booked more than 40 times by the Utah County Sheriff's Office. Among my very first meetings was to say, let me tell you about Dale Bowles. He said, that gentleman and I have kind of a personal relationship. He's done a lot of work for me at my home. He's kind of a handyman. And I said, how in the world are we helping society 
by taking a person like this and continuing to keep them down and down and down. Once he's told his staff, wink, wink, I want you to handle this case a particular way, that probably created a personal conflict of interest for all of his staff. She says Levitt should have never used his friend or employee's case as an example of the office's new policies. It blew me away. It blew everybody away. I mean, that was all anybody could talk about for the rest of the day because it was so wildly inappropriate. But that is not how Levitt sees it. While well, some say the personal relationship means he should have steered clear, he says that's why he brought it up as part of a bigger policy discussion. I, I use the Dale Bowles example because I'm so intimately involved with that example. I encourage my, my prosecutors to get as close to every case as they possibly can. Pick up another file from the office and learn the facts and use that as an example. Let the staff put two and two together. Bowles was charged with driving on a suspended license, an interlock violation, and driving with a broken headlight. All charges, except for the broken headlight, were dismissed. The prosecutor assigned to the case tells Fox 13 without Levitt's speech, the case probably would have had a different outcome. He said he handled the case differently based on that meeting. Well, I hope he did. I, you know, I wish that everyone would have taken the lesson from that meeting and treated every case differently. In 2020, Bowles was charged with possession of meth, but this time Levitt said it would have been a conflict for his office to prosecute, so he gave the case to Salt Lake County. He says the reason the result was different is because the case was different. You're dealing with the difference between a felony and a minor traffic violation. Does the bar discriminate on conflicts of interest, whether it's a infraction, a misdemeanor, or a felony? I don't think so, but the difference here, Adam, is this. I didn't make a specific recommend, I didn't make a specific decision on the, on the traffic case. The appearance of a conflict can't, it can't be. Now, members of the Utah County Sheriff's Office are chiming in, saying the county attorney asked their deputies to ignore the law during a traffic stop involving that handyman. Well, when we interviewed David Levitt last month, he was quick to point out that he has enemies at the Utah County Sheriff's Office. The sheriff says the two do not see eye to eye on how to enforce the law. And now we've found those issues have especially come to a head as we look closer at the way Utah County has handled multiple criminal cases involving Levitt's handyman. For years, Dale Bowles has been in and out of the Utah County Jail for many of the same charges, driving under the influence and driving on a suspended license. He's an addict, he's got a real problem and needs to get a hold of it, but he's having a hard time doing that. But on November 13th, 2018, Bowles did nothing wrong. He was simply in the passenger seat when a woman got arrested on drug charges. Deputies described the traffic stop as routine until they got a phone call from Bull's boss. The deputy took the phone and talked to this person and he told him his name was David Levitt and asked him if he knew who he was. Don't know how it was intended, but it just, it just seemed unusual. Uh, Mr. Levitt had been elected county attorney but hadn't yet been sworn in. Dale worked for me, that's the short answer. Uh, he was a handyman on my house. Deputies told us they did not feel threatened, but they thought Levitt was trying to use his position inappropriately, especially when he asked them not to impound the car, which they determined is required by state law. So they impounded it anyway. That seemed inappropriate, yes. And the deputy said that when he realized who it was, he just kind of shook his head and couldn't believe that he was being asked to not impound the car. He shouldn't be representing the defendant when he's the county attorney. Linda F. Smith is an attorney and member of the Utah State Bar Ethics Advisory Opinion Committee. She agrees with the sheriff's office that Levitt getting involved was inappropriate. 19 days ago, Fox 13 sent an email asking Levitt to explain what happened. He has not responded despite multiple follow-ups. It was so wildly inappropriate. Let's fast forward now to January 2022. Deputies say they arrested Bowles twice that month in both cases for DUI and driving on a suspended license. So far, records show he has not been charged for the January 6th arrest. In the January 26th case, deputies say he was trying to hide fentanyl. He had hidden that inside his body and it was found inside the jail. Deputies say when Levitt's office screened the case, they were shocked. Prosecutors only charged Bowles with misdemeanors and not a felony. They're not sure if Bowles received any special treatment from his boss. 
We don't always agree with the charges that the county attorney does, but sometimes their decisions make less sense than others. Last month, in a phone call with Fox 13, Utah County Sheriff Mike Smith told us he feels a lot of criminals are being treated too leniently. Quote, I don't agree with the way David Levitt does things. I don't agree with his policies. He's killing us in Utah County. Sergeant Cannon says the latest DUI cases probably should have been given to another prosecutor's office due to a conflict of interest which is exactly what Levitt did when Bowles was charged with possession of meth in 2020. That has not happened in the fentanyl case. Dale Bowles became the target for people because Dale Bowles was associated with me. If he feels like he has a target on his back, we didn't put it there. Uh, he would be the one who put it there by his behavior. Reporting in Utah County, Adam Herbetz, Fox 13 News, Utah. More developing news tonight. Multiple local and federal law enforcement agencies are investigating ritualistic sexual abuse, also human trafficking of children all over Utah. Fox 13 News investigative reporter Adam Herbitz has been following the story and takes a closer look. Well, the Utah County Sheriff's Office opened this case in April 2021, but according to our confidential sources, they are not starting from scratch. Here's what the department is willing to share so far. Reports of ritualistic sexual abuse and human trafficking involving children in at least these three areas. Utah County, San Pete County, and Juab County between the years of 1990 and 2010. The Sheriff's Office has not released any other specifics. However, we have learned some of the subjects of this investigation are high profile individuals. We're just being as careful as we can before we toss names out. Any given individual, it's the way it is. I mean, we, the chips fall where they are and we follow them. Good evening, everyone. Tensions flying between the Utah County Attorney and Sheriff Mike Smith. County Attorney David Levitt asked the sheriff to resign today, even calling for an investigation into his activities. Fox 13 News reporter Chris Arnold has what both men have to say today. He joins us live from the Utah County Sheriff's Office with more. Chris. Well, Kelly, Bob, this all stems from an investigation into allegations of a child, a ritualistic child sexual abuse case that is in child sex trafficking. Now, County Attorney David Levitt said the case involved a woman who he says was tragically mentally ill and made claims of sex abuse against 15 people. Those are allegations Levitt says were found to not be credible, causing the case to be dismissed. Now, Levitt said during a press conference this afternoon that he and his wife were named in those allegations, saying the two were guilty of cannibalizing and murdering young children. It was, it was it was debunked more than 10 years ago. It was dismissed. I take exception to any victim who comes forward and is, cat and is characterized as tragically mentally ill. How dare you? The Tribal Social Services looked at us and said, we're not giving you this baby. This video was recorded by a documentarian in 2020. It's 17 minutes long, and it shows Utah County Attorney David Levitt telling the story of how he managed to adopt a tribal infant in 2017. And finally, this strategy comes into my head, and if you got five minutes, I'll tell you the story. As he describes it, his strategy meant hopping on a plane to Montana, then walking onto the reservation unscheduled to meet with the president of the Northern Cheyenne tribe. I said, I'm, I'm here for two reasons. I said, I'm here to tell you the second reason first, um, but I'll tell, you the, uh, I'll tell you the first reason second. And I said, but before I tell you the second reason, I want to tell you a story. <laughs> his story touches on the importance of family. Then it highlights his close friendship with former Ukrainian President Viktor Yushchenko. Viktor and I have this goal of introducing Buffalo into Western Ukraine. And you're a sovereign nation and you have a buffalo herd, and Ukraine is a sovereign nation, and it, and it doesn't have a buffalo herd, but it wants one. And so I'm here to try and, and form, see if we can form a bilateral agreement between the people of the Northern Cheyenne and the people of Ukraine to introduce buffalo to Western Ukraine. And at, at that point, you know, he was all ears. I bet. And I said, that's the second reason why I'm here. The first reason why I'm here is this that we want to adopt one of your people. He says tribal president Jace Killsback gave his blessing, but tribal social services did not. 
So Levitt went back to the president to try again. Watch and listen to how he describes the tribal president made a compelling argument to help Levitt clear that final hurdle and take home the child that same day. He said, listen, uh, the Levitts are friends of the tribe. He's an asset to the, they're assets to the tribe for more than, more than just this. I left, and five minutes later, the phone rang, and um, it was the social worker saying, I think, I think I figured out a way to get this child to you. <laughs> Jace Killsback has declined to comment. At the time of this interview, he was in prison for fraud in an unrelated case. Not every child needs to grow up um, in the city, um, green grass, a white picket fence house. It's best for the Native children to remain in Native communities. Stephanie Benali, a Native American specialist for Utah Foster Care, is not just giving her opinion in this interview. She's describing federal law, the Indian Child Welfare Act. It was passed in 1978 to protect Native American children from being adopted by non-Native families. Prior to the act, 25 to 35 percent of Native children were removed from their home and placed um, in non-native homes. There's such a prejudice in the native community about uh, a non-native adopting a native. Levitt says the child is family. Technically, she's his step foster great niece. They might not be related by blood, but ultimately, the tribe gets to decide who's considered family. According to court documents, the child's biological mother willingly gave up her parental rights, but the biological father did not. Let, let me put it this way. Um, I would like our elected officials to be um, servants of the public and not self-serving. Linda F. Smith is a member of the Utah State Bar Ethics Advisory Opinion Committee. She also taught ethics at the University of Utah for more than 30 years. She says the video is concerning in more ways than one. He was clearly... Um, politicking <laughs> to get his way. It was um, a little smarmy <laughs> a way to talk somebody into uh, letting you adopt uh, a child that may, might otherwise be better raised by the tribe. David Levitt is the same county attorney who named himself as the subject of a ritualistic child sex abuse investigation. Last month, he announced he is not a murderer, a cannibal, or an abuser. And he accused the Utah County Sheriff of playing politics right before the primary, even though Levitt was not publicly named. This is not a politically motivated investigation. I mean, is it disturbing? Yeah, it is. You have to kind of separate that and not let that, not let emotions affect in your investigation at all. Noel Engels is a former analyst with Homeland Security. He confirmed his team had been investigating sexual allegations against Levitt for several years. Then, in 2020, Homeland Security received the video and started investigating for human trafficking. It's literally our job is to make sure children are safe. Five months after receiving the video, documents show Noel and his team were removed from the case. He has since filed a whistleblower complaint and received back this letter. You allege that Homeland Security improperly terminated an investigation into allegations involving current Utah County Attorney David Levitt. We emphasize that while the Office of Special Counsel has found a substantial likelihood of wrongdoing based on the information you submitted in support of your allegations, our referral to the Secretary for Investigation is not a final determination that the allegations are substantiated. This is not how you adopt a child. Um, this is how you procure a child. We reached out to David Levitt for an explanation last week. His spokesperson said he would be happy to tell the entire story, but not until after tomorrow's election, because they believe, quote, this has no bearing on his performance as Utah County attorney and is not relevant. We want you to know we are publishing the full 17-minute clip online at fox13now.com. I really want to call out Fox 13. Are they here? Is that you? Shame on your news station. Shame on Adam Hurwitz. That's Utah County Attorney David Levitt upset with Fox 13 News for asking about allegations against him. Rather than answering our questions, Levitt held a news conference to announce he was the subject of a ritualistic child sex abuse investigation that would probably go away soon. But that hasn't gone away. 
Today, prosecutors talked about the case in court. Tonight, Fox 13 News investigative reporter Adam Herbetz joins us in studio with information about another suspect with ties to Levitt. Adam. Yeah, Bob Kelly, we want to be clear. We never named David Levitt or anyone else as a suspect, and neither did investigators tied to this case. Most agencies don't want to talk about it, but today in court, a judge asked many of the same questions we've been asking. And for that reason, we finally got a few more answers about the direction of this investigation. There is no organized ring of abuse. It was, it was debunked more than 10 years ago. It was dismissed. He says it was politically motivated, but even his own employees now say they disagree. I would take exception to the suggestion that this is politically motivated. This is about trying to do the right thing for the investigation. Even though Levitt has been the most vocal suspect, he is not the only one. Another figure accused of being part of the child sex abuse was just in court today, trying to get his record expunged. This is his attorney. I think it may be politically motivated. Your Honor, this is the investigative file. So there is... Um, about a thousand pages of, of uh, information there. The Utah County Sheriff's Office has arrested its first suspect in a ritualistic child sex abuse investigation, but they think there will be more arrests. Fox 13 News investigative reporter Adam Herbetz has been following this story all year. He joins us live in studio with this evening's update. Adam. Yeah, Bob, we have been accumulating information on this man, David Hamblin, since February. Today, the sheriff's office confirmed its investigation does not stop with his arrest. There are still multiple victims, multiple suspects. Each story is different, but the common thread is that the allegations are very disturbing. I mean, let's, let's look. The first time we heard David Hamblin's name was in 2012, charged with 18 felony counts of sex abuse against multiple family members. This video shows Provo police spending months conducting interviews. Then they recorded an undercover phone call where he confessed, I am sorry for raping you. I'm not saying somebody in my body didn't do it. The Utah County Attorney's Office dropped the charges. Do you think this time it will be different? I do think it will be different. Brett Bluth, another victim, says David Hamblin was his therapist, recommended to him by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to cure him of his homosexuality. Did you feel like being gay was a disease? Absolutely. Do you expect there will be additional arrests? Uh, we do at some point, yes. Yeah, this is, uh, it's very active. We have uh, victims we're still working with. And uh, so we anticipate that we'll, uh, we'll have other arrests uh, to make in this case. Would you mind riding in the back of a police car? Men and women allege David Hamblin used positions of power as a father, a therapist, a neighbor, and as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to ritualistically abuse children. He was arrested Wednesday morning, but investigators say he probably won't be the only one. I have nothing to hide. Until Hamblin's arrest, Fox 13 News chose not to identify any of the subjects of the investigation, but that did not stop Utah County Attorney David Levitt from outing himself as a suspect in June and describing his relationship with Hamblin. I prosecuted the therapist in Jeff County for poaching a deer. He poached a deer to use for ritualistic purposes. This therapist was my elders quorum president in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was my neighbor. I had a family connection. During that same press conference, Levitt described his accuser as tragically mentally ill. She's one of the same women who accused Hamblin and others. Shame on you for doing that. That's, it's uncalled for. And he said tragically mentally ill woman five times. To attack their, their mental health status as a way to discredit them, and it was clear that that's what he was doing, and that's, that's just not okay. There, there is no organized ring of abuse. It was, it was debunked. But watch and listen. More than two years before that press conference, Levitt sat down for a different interview 
and was asked if he thought ritualistic sex abuse was real. He went on to describe Hamblin and his own accuser, calling her a victim. Do I think that it occurs? Yeah, I think it occurs. I know some victims of it. Yeah, they, they, I know some victims of it. I, I was not in a position to prosecute it. Who was into Native American stuff had killed deer and get deer hearts and drink their blood and drink the deer's blood. At the time, Levitt was under investigation by Homeland Security. These clips are now evidence in that case. We want to warn you, some of them are very graphic. How do you train a dog to roll over when it's time to roll over? You know, you do it by giving a reward and repetition. If a man wants to program some little girl to give immoral sex anytime he wants to, you start young and give rewards. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, unfortunately, I, I've never, you know, it, it's the same way you help a child learn how to make their bed. Yesterday, after Hamblin's arrest, we asked David Levitt through his spokesperson for a comment. We were told, no, he does not comment on pending cases. Apparently, that did not stop him in June. Reporting in studio tonight, Adam Herbetz. Fox 18 News, Utah.